Um, so individuals uh, within this hierarchical model will be living in municipalities. They'll have contacts with those in the same municipality most tightly, and then they can move between municipalities and sort of form new contacts in that new municipality. Okay? Um, those municipalities will be linked by a network of roads, and um, you can imagine people moving along those roads as well. Okay. Um, so we're trying to capture this multi-level hierarchies. We're going to be doing so with a very simple example that shows the sort of generality of the approach. And you can imagine extending it to arbitrarily many levels to um, non-nested hierarchies as well as multi-level nested hierarchies, et cetera. Um, so it turns out that um, we have been operating within um, uh, within any logic in a fairly um, routine sort of way. And um, we typically used its features in a um, more or less uh, well-defined set of places. So for example, state charts have lived exclusively in our models within a person. And a person has lived exclusively within Maine. That's the stage in which these, these persons circulate. Um, what we're going to be doing is questioning that here. So um, for example, we'll have agents within agents. Okay? So there'll be agents that have sub-agents uh, within them. And the agent that will have the sub-agent is municipality. It'll have agents of people within this. Um, so we're going to create structural hierarchies in any logic that in fact parallel the hierarchies of the world. Parallel in the sense that uh, we're going to have neighbor or we're going to have a municipality that includes people. And to find the people within the municipality, you look within the municipality and ask it for person one, person two, et cetera, just as people are nested within municipalities in the world. Um, and as I said, that's a very natural sort of parallel hierarchy that you don't have in many sorts of models. Um, and it lends itself to easy visualization and easy analysis and understanding. OK, so I asked you to open this up. Um, what we're going to have is Maine, and it's going to have a population of agents, and those agents are going to be called cities. Okay? And those cities will be in one type of network. City is going to contain a population of persons that are going to be in a different sort of network. Okay? So let's do this. Um, so I'd like you to, uh, you should have something like this uh, on your screen, Maine, person, and simulation. And we're going to modify this in a pretty abrupt way. So I would suggest if you don't want to overwrite your thing that you save it as like hierarchical city population model because we don't want to destroy your original model. Okay. Sorry? The hierarchy? Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure about that. I, I, I can't say for sure. It may well be. Okay. So what I'd like you to do first is copy the person class. Okay. Right click on it and do copy. And then do paste, or you can do it through the edit menu. Okay, um, so and then right click on the on the project name and do paste. So you're gonna have to copy it into the same project, and you should get something like this. Okay, person and person one. Okay, um, we could have added a new agent altogether, a new agent class called city. I just thought uh, it would be quicker in this in this way uh, for didactic reasons. Um, there's nothing special about what I've just done. Rename person one is city. Okay, so we're going to have person, then we're going to have another agent called city. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, it doesn't matter. It turns out uh, that's fine. You can do control enter. Control enter is for so-called refactoring, and what that would say is that anything that was counting on the name person one when you rename it to city would be auto automatically renamed to city. But there's really nothing substantive that's depending on it. So it really doesn't matter one way or the other. Um, OK, so now I'd like you to open main, double click in main, OK? And you should see a population. And I'd like you to click on population. And you'll notice that this is a population of what? It's a population of person. Yeah, it's a population of people. So I'd like you to delete it, OK? Um, so delete that population, because we're going to have in Maine a population of what? Cities. cities, yeah. OK, so deleted that population. I want you to drag city over there. So click and drag over and drop it in, OK? So there's going to be a city population. 
And so you should get something like this. And if you click on it, oh, um, if you click on it, I want you to change its name to city population. And I want it to have a replication of, this is going to be uniform uh, between 10 and 200. So sometimes it'll be 200 cities, sometimes it'll be uh, 10 cities. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Just <laughs> I don't think I counted that later, sorry. You can, you can make it whatever you want. I mean, make it 20 or what have you. But uh, I had it being drawn here. Exactly one value is being drawn from that. Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, between 10 and 200. Um, OK, so basically we can have a random number of, of cities um, initially in, in place. We're going to add an environment. And we're going to, um, yeah, so, so I think I got rid of, um, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, what did I? Uh, Sorry, uh, did I? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I must have flipped forward a couple of slides here. Uh, gosh. Uh, so we dragged the city here, and then we, we did this. Sorry, the replication for that should be 10. Sorry about that. I must have gone forward a couple of slides. Do have a replication of 10 for, for cities. That makes a lot more sense. Um, and, uh, and the environment here is just environment, OK? Um, that's the, the pre-existing environment. Yeah. Uh, yes, it would round it off, but there's actually a uniform discrete distribution as well that any logic provides that, that's explicitly <laughs> uh, geared towards uh, drawing from a, a discrete set of values, which is, uh, you wouldn't, in general, you don't want to actually use uh, a uniform distribution to draw integer values. Um, so th you'd be better off using the uniform discrete, and, and I stand corrected. That's a very good point. Um, yeah, it's called uniform underbar D I S C R, I think. Um, but you can do a control space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it's called cities. Um, I I somehow skip forward, and the city population will be within a city. It'll be the population. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So this is cities. So in other words, you drag this in from there to there, and then you set it, and basically the city is in the associated with the environment. It's a replication of ten. So there's ten cities. Okay. Um, you'll see where those other numbers came from. And then for the environment, I'd like you to go to the advanced tab and set it to be a distance-based environment with a connection range of 250. Okay, So that's for the environment. So we're going to set these cities to be connected if they are what? Within 250 units of each other as Euclidean distance. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And network type, make sure it's distance-based. Yeah. Uh, okay, now double click on city. Okay, if you double click on city, now you want to add a municipal population. To do this, you're going to drag person to the city. Okay, so so to be clear here, we were working here with with a main. We drag the city to it. We set its property, set them in an environment. Now we're entering city. We're opening up city, and we're going to drag person to that to add a municipal population. Does that make sense? So we're going to have a population within each city that's a people, right? And that's called city population. And that has the replication, uh, sorry, uh, the replication of uniform between 10 and 200. So what is this doing, folks? We're in a city. And what is this saying? What is this really giving us, this replication? It's giving us the what? The, the population of the city. And that's why I was looking at that before. Why would we set there to be a random number of, of, of cities? But no, this is saying among the different cities, sometimes some are big, some are small, well, relatively speaking. Um, is it 10 people? 10, 10 people, 200. Yeah, we can set it to be much larger. Let's. Uh, You're used to modeling Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're all Saskatchewan. That's, uh, yeah, no, we. Uh, <laughs> that's right. No, actually, what we're dealing with here is the confines of screen space. Um, so screen real estate is limited, but um, you you can make it larger if so you want to. Um, yeah, you can make it ten thousand. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. That's right. Although there's some scaling relationships, but yeah. Okay. So so does this make sense, folks? So we have within each city a population of people, and there's there's a, a randomly drawn number of people there. And this should be really uniform, discrete. Um, th what's the environment? 
Um, the environment is coming. Um, so there's add an environment. You add the environment from the palette under model. Um, you add it from there, drag it over, and rename it city environment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you're going to set that to, uh, to uh, have a continuous space type with width 50, height 50. So what that's saying is each city has a certain sort of uh, spatial extent, which incidentally could have vary with population or whatever, but we're, we're just specifying this. And then for the neighborhood type, I'd let, like you to set it to a, a, small, a small world, excuse me, a scale-free network, okay? So in other words, within each city, people are gonna have a spatial location, 50 by 50, and they're gonna be set to, um, to be in a scale-free network, okay? Um, and, uh, and then I'd like you to set that so that the city population has the city environment as its environment. Does that make sense? So, so the city population is gonna be embedded within a given area as set by the environment, 50 by 50, and they're gonna be in a scale-free network. And so the city population has to be associated with the city environment, and each city is gonna have a somewhat different number of people, okay? Okay, okay, so now, now I'd like you to run the model. You should get something like this. Um, so here we have, what, are, what, are, what do I see on the screen? What, why do I see what I see? These are, so, so, so what are the small circles? Those are people. What are these clusters? What are these lines between people? Those are what sort of network? They're scale free. What are these lines between cities? They're a distance based network. That's right. Um, okay. I think what's going on is that this guy is actually in this. <laughs> I, okay. I my my guess would be that. This guy is in this cluster. He just happens not to be connected, and so this is this is. Um, oh, okay, I know what it is. Sorry. Okay, I, I got it. Yeah. Um, so what's going on here is as follows, and we'll see this borne out in just a minute. Okay. Do you notice the distance-based network here? Do you notice the commonality about where it ends up with respect to each city? So here we have different cities, where is, their, where is their port of connection with the other cities? In the top left. It's always on the top, top left, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is the top left node of this cluster here. Top, the top left, you can't really see it there, but it's always, it's always up there. This is the origin point for the city. The people are kind of spread out within that city. And this is the origin point. So this person actually does live in this city. And they're sort of the, they, they happen to be very close. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually, excuse me. This is, so we're fine hypothesis yet. Yeah. This is a representation of the city. Because we didn't change the city's representation. So ladies and gentlemen, let us do that. So we're going to change the relative size for cities and people, eh? Um, better than um, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, double click on city um, and expand the, the, the hierarchy. And what you're going to see is the city has a visual representation here that's a very modest representation. Um, and, uh, and I'd like you to drag it to, en you know, enlarge, uh, drag it so that you, you make it really large and, and recenter it on the origin. Um, and now you should have something like this, where once again it's kind of uh, a, a larger city, uh, and the people are still kind of spread off here. And there's a reason they're all offset from kind of the zero point within the city. What? Why are they all? Why are they all located like that within? Um, like why are they all in this quadrant? It's actually a very, very good reason for this. Um, now, now I'm getting in trouble because I'm not actually following this um, in my uh, thing. So either I have to do this really whip, whip quick, or 
I have to go load this in. Um, I think I'm going to uh, load this in. Okay, um, let's go uh, go to the hierarchical model. No, we don't want this. Um, we want this guy here, hierarchical city population model. There we go. Um, okay, uh, so let's let's go up here. Um, I'm going to run this, and let's just make sure that it's giving comparable results here to what we saw on the screen that I haven't already fixed it. Okay, good. So why are they all in this quadrant? They're all in that quadrant because that's where, if we go to city, okay, that's where people are told to, to be relative to. So this is kind of the origin of person. And so everyone's space is defined from there. If we wanted people's sort of spatial origin to be defined, um, you know, starting from sort of the upper left of that city, um, to use 50 units this way and 50 down from that, we'd really need to put them kind of out out here. This is kind of, this represents the the, the origin with respect to that 50, 50 unit sort of space that we define for people. Do you remember that? So when we went to, um, to define a uh, uh, person here, excuse me, um, in, in city, we had the city environment it was of width 50 and height 50, eh? And so people, if they were here, they'd all be spread out sort of going down and into the right from here. So we're gonna move them up here. Let's, let's, let's uh, take a look at that. We kind of glossed over that point previously, but um, okay, now that's a little bit better, but 50 by 50, they should be given a little bit more room. Most of those cities are pretty big. Um, and uh, so let's move it to up to 100 by 100. Um, obviously, it's going to depend on the width of the um, of the um, the circle we're using, and so on. Okay, so we're going to run it now. Um, okay, now it's a little bit too big for their britches. Um, so let, let's let's move it back to uh, 75 by 75. Um, and and now they'll fit better within the city. Okay, but we're still not done. I mean, this is all sort of just. Uh, making it look good, but we need to, um, we need to actually add some dynamics because we really don't have any distinct dynamics here. Um, so, um, at least you folks don't. Um, uh, okay, okay, so, so let's go back to our model here. Um, let us go add a function to the person campus and it's gonna be called move to random city. Say uh, it means move to a randomly selected city. So um, uh, go to the to the general properties there and uh, go to the code. And we're going to enter this code here. Now this is the code to move a person to a city. So that person needs to. What are the pieces of this? Let me let me ask this before I spoil it. I ta we talked quite a bit last time about when you're thinking about a job. Initially, sort of glossing over and just say, okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have something that will move a person to a to a random city. That's good. That's a starting point. But then think about how to implement that. What are the what are, what pieces do we need to do to move a person to a random city? So suppose we want to zap a person from one city to another. Good. And we'll, and yep, we're gonna need to know that because we need to do what with that. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna need to take them away from the city they came from and put them to the city they went to, right? And turns out there's at least one other thing which we have to tell it to kind of update visually kind of in the new city where they are, um, actually to connect them to the network there. Because they come in and they have to be connected up to other people, right? Okay, so we're gonna have those pieces here. So this is, this is the code and this is gonna use, this is gonna draw on some of the things we saw last time with Java expressions and Java statements. Okay, so what am I doing here? What is this thing here? What is this line doing? What, what is this city, my city? city that person. Okay, so this is a this is this is going to label the city of and but what is my city here? Is it a is it a horse? It, 
Okay, it is a city. It's going to refer to a city, but what is this thing in Java? It's a, it's a variable. City is a class. It's a reference to class. That's the type of this. It's saying this is something which holds references to cities. Okay? This is a, a variable, and it's going to hold a value. Remember, variables hold values, right? This is an expression that computes the value. What is this going to do? So this is, what is this here? It's referring to a what? What is this? Yeah, this is the person in this case. Remember, cities are agents too, so now we can't really just say, oh, it's an agent. It's, it's a person agent. And what is dot get city? What does that remind you of? Get main. And actually, this, like get main, this is something that any log would automatically produce, get city. This person is, is in a, um, is associated with a population that's called, um, uh, that, that, excuse me, is embedded within a city, and so it adds something called get city to get the city associated with them. Um, so this is this dot get city. That will get the city associated with them. We've used that for this dot get main before. This is getting their city. So it's saying, hey, and this is exactly what was said earlier. You know, they've got to figure out where they are, right? Okay, I'm going to move between the city. Um, uh, this thing has got to tell Boston, I'm out of here. Um, so this is getting sort of, okay, I'm in Boston. Um, and now I've got, I'm actually going to get the count of cities. This is, I wouldn't do it this way if I, if I had my brothers at the moment. But what I do is I get a count of cities, and then I choose a random city, and then basically I'm going to get a reference to that city. So this is a reference to my city. This is my city. Um, I'm going to have a reference to my city, Boston. And, and here's the city destination, the city to which I'm moving to, Montreal. And, and so this is a reference to Montreal. So what I'm doing is to get a reference to Montreal, to, to get a reference to the new city I'm going to, all I do is I get the count of cities and I pick a random one among those. This is this uniform discrete between zero and count of cities minus one. So if, if there were, if there was, uh, total of, of one city, this would always be between zero and zero, so it'll be the, we, we count up from zero, one, two, three, so it'll be the zero city, the only city. If I had two cities between zero and one, two possible values, but at three cities, with zero, one, two, three possible values. So this basically picks an index of a city and gets that city. Let's see how this works, though. Here's my city. I get associated with my city the main. And I'm getting main now from my city. M remember, the city is embedded in main. And from main, I get the number of cities, and I get the, the size of that, the number of cities that there are. So I get that. This is a reference to the cities. I'm saying, hey, city, give me your size. This is just a collection. It's a collection of cities that's living in main. That's the population. Remember we added that? We added that population to main. We call it cities. This is what it's getting at size. Okay. Then I'm going to get an index between 0 and the size of that. And then I'm going to get a random city from that collection. This is the same, by the way, this is the same cities thing. It's the, the same sort of pattern here. I'm going up and getting the cities. And I'm saying, hey, give me this random, this city number 0, or city number 1. By the way, it could be my city that I'm in right now. I'm going to move from Boston to Boston. I'm just going to move to a random place in it. Okay. So then I print out something, say, I just moved from city to city. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is, my city I'm going to remove myself from, the destination city I'm going to add myself to, and then that city's environment, I'm going to say, apply your network. Why do I have to do this apply network thing? Sorry? Yeah, basically they're moving into a new city at a random location. Um, I'd have to think about that a little bit. I think it's going to be a random location. And so so suddenly they're in this new city, and they're going to have to be woven into that scale-free network. So it's going to take the job of sort of connecting them up. Okay, um, Okay. so that's, that's the code here for move to random city. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to a person class. In the person class, we're going to add something that's an event. And it says desiring intercity move. It's going to go off with a rate of 0 0.01. So on average, there's going to be what time between these events? If it 
goes off with rate 0 0.01, there's what mean time between the events? 100. 100. No. 1 over 0 0.01. Um, it's just like if you had a chance of 0 0.01 each time step of leaving a stock, you're in that stock for an average of 100 time steps. And so the action associated with this event will be moved to random city. The distribution for that is so no there's uh, okay so the the resi the time until this occurs has one distribution which is an exponential distribution um, this is Poisson arrivals um, which are occurring and uh, there's a distribution of uh, uh, associated with the count of arrivals that occur within a certain period which is a different distribution a Poisson distribution so. Um, uh, there's a set of distributions associated with it, but perhaps the most common one is the uh, is is the exponential, the time until it occurs. Okay, and then there's the second order into arrival time and Erlang, etc. Okay, so this is yeah. What do you call uh, underscore add? Uh, oh, oh, uh, this one here. Oh. You, you point out a good thing. Um, so when we first did this in an earlier version of any logic, this was the way you had to. Okay. So, so um, we've added people to a population before. How have we added to people to a population? Does anyone remember? We did it last time. We add people to the population. How do how do we add someone to a population? Does anyone remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. So if I wanted to, like in Maine, add add someone at the oops at the very beginning of time um, uh, to add to the population, I could do or I want to add a city. I do um, uh, excuse me, add under bar cities, right? But you'll notice that that doesn't take. Forgive me for for flaunting my geek speed, but that doesn't take an argument. What I mean is there's nothing past to this. There's, I'm not saying add this person to the city, or add this city to the cities. I'm just saying add a new generic city, okay? And so I wanted a way that I could actually say, don't just add a generic person to this new population. I want to move this particular person. I want to move him from this city to this city. Okay, and and at that version of any logic, I can't can't say whether this has been fixed, but it, we couldn't find any other way than using this undocumented feature to do that. Okay, so in other words, what again is this here? This is living in this move to random city. Where is that located? What class is that in? It's in person. So this is referring to a person here, and so. What I'm adding into the new population is this particular person with all the attributes of that person, their current state, their history, all those sort of things. And this was the only way I knew to do it at that time. And maybe that there's, may well be that there's a better way to do it now. I've got to check that. So thank you for reminding me of that. It's, a, uh, it's an uncomfortable fact. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it, it, any logic uses it internally. I thought, well, good enough. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll use it right now. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, this that's that's why that's there. Okay, so this is move to random city. By the way, what I'm ignoring here, what am I ignoring here picking a random city? I'm ignoring something that I mentioned as an idea, but actually it's a good a good exercise to instead of just moving to random city, you move to a connected city. One of the cities to which this city is connect directly connected. You move to one of its neighbors, right? And that is, how would you do that? Heck, let's do that. Let's, let's just do it. Um, okay, so, so tell me what to do, folks. Okay. Okay, good. And you gotta pick one. Good, I like that. So how do I find, that's exactly right. So we divide into pieces, divide our difficulties. Um, 
So how are we going to find what cities this one is connected to? So first we have to know our city, right? And we already have that here. So we, we, we're cooking with gas. Um, so, so how are we going to find out the cities to which it's connected? Yeah, yeah, we always did that for people, but we, hey, cities are, well, cities aren't people too, but um, city, we can do it for cities because they're agents also, it turns out. And by the way, we'll come back to that point. People and cities are all agents, okay? There's a, they're a so-called subtype of agent. They have all the features of agents, they just have some additional features each to their own. And that's really important because it means anything that works with an agent can work with a city. Anything that works with an agent can work with a person, okay? Like we can call get connections on it. Um, we could add them into populations and so on. We can compute statistics on them. All those things carry over because they're a so-called subtype of agent. Okay, okay, so we have my city. So we can do get connection connected agent okay but suppose we wanted to okay so suppose I want to say get connected agent okay that's a good start no but which agent do I want to connect to which city do I want to get from the ones to which this is connected sorry a random one good excellent so how am I going to get a random city Sorry? Okay, okay, so I'll use a uniform. I have no reason to prefer one to the other. I mean, you could make this arbitrarily, you could make it be weighted by the size of the city, right? Um, so that I'm more likely to move to a city, a neighboring city that's larger. And that would kind of lead to growth of populations of those cities. You'd have kind of winner take all effects, right? But, but let's, let's just do, let's do a uniform. And for reasons we talked about earlier, there's this kind of uniform discrete. I'll, I'll make it from uh, zero, to be very clear about this, zero to what? Okay, so I, I'm gonna get the connected agent. If I wanna get the first connected agent, what do I use again? If I wanna, if, if, I, if I wanted to, remember this get connected agent, I'm gonna have to give it a number, right? It's zero, we'll give it the first. One, we'll give the second and so on. Um, uh, so I wanna draw a number between zero and what? Yeah, who's get connections number? This dot get connections number, or my cities? Because we're asking about the number of connections my city has, not the number of connections I as a person have. I might have a very rich family, a large, you know, a large set of of uh, brothers and sisters and cousins beyond counting. But um, I'm not interested in counting them, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that could be why I'm moving. That, that's right. Um, astute observation. Um, so, so um, uh, and then I want to do minus one, I'd claim. Why, why do I want to do this minus one? Um, yeah. Um, so, look, folks, if I had only. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> if, if I had only one connected. If I had only one person, connect, one other city connected to this one, um, then I'd want to draw a number between zero and what? Zero yeah. and zero. zero. I'd only want a zero. If I had two connections, this city has two other cities nearby it, I want to no draw two possible numbers, right? Zero and one. So it's got to be get connections number minus one. If, if it were just get connections number, that would cause problems. I would say with even one connected city, I have two choices, zero and one. And that would cause all sorts of headache because it would cause a cause an array overflow or array boundary error, um, which I will spare you. Um, okay, so uh, basically, you'd be trying to grab things from the to, from the 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 first uh, the second connected city when there ain't one. Okay, so so this got get connected agent. And that should pretty much do it, right? So I should be able to take this, and that's the city destination, is it not? Is it not? Um, so uh, you know, I could, I could, I could just put this in now. Now that's an awful lot packed in one line. So 
you know, depending on your aesthetics, you might want to do something like this. Um, uh, and, um, okay, so I might want to do something like this. Um, so int, you know, count connected cities, um, just to make this very clear what I'm thinking, okay, so there's that many cities to which this one is connected, and then I want to draw a random one. I want to do uniform discrete from, you know, something like that. And then, and these are names, so I kind of know what they are, and so I don't have to kind of puzzle them out. And then uh, I have a random city index, and I'll just do get connected agent here like this, right? Um, so, you know, depending on your sense of aesthetics, that may be somewhat clearer. Um, it's more lines, but it's it's uh, a little bit more obvious maybe what's going on. Um, and, you know, you could even say this is random connected city index. Um, just to be clear, we're, we're connecting it to, to neighbor ones, right? Um, okay. So, um, here we have uh, destination city and all the rest should remain the same, right? We're gonna remove it and we're gonna add to the new one and apply the network. And in fact, I would actually argue that this whole thing could be a separate function. It's like, now that you found the two cities, what I would be tempted to do is watch this. Um, I'd be tempted to say, um, uh, let me go get a function. And I would say, um, you know, move, this would be, um, move uh, between specified cities or something like that, where there'd be city one um, or, you know, city, uh, city from, right? And that would be of type, whoa, type city. And there'd be city two, um, you know, the city to which I'm, I'm hey, hey yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, city to which I'm going. And this is the code right there. Um, and in this, my city is city from now. It's the city from which I'm going. And then this um, uh, city two is this one here. And city two is, is this one. I could have called it city destination, right? So what this is doing now, move to random city. Now I just have to call move between specified cities and give it my city, the city I'm going from, and city destination as the thing I'm going to. And, and this just hides the details that's involved in that, like that illegal call. Um, sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, that would, be, that would be a nice thing. Okay, so, um, so move to random connected city. Good, um, excellent. Uh, and then if we tried to compile this, we'd get an error. We tried to build it because it would say, hey, well, two things, okay, fine. Um, okay, first of all, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the first one, uh, which is easier, which is this, this thing now has to do move to random connected city, right? Um, since we changed that's name, or we could have done the refactoring, it would have changed that automatically. But then there's a second thing here, um, which is it says cannot convert from agent continuous 2D to city. Okay, um, uh, okay, that's, but it's giving us the sort of wrong wrong location here. It's actually in uh, move to random connected city. It's in the code here that it's having trouble right there. Um, uh, okay, so it's having problems here because I said get connected agent and it says, wait a minute, this is a agent continuous 2D and you're telling me it's a city. How do you know it's a city? I say, well, I know cities are only connected to cities, so I'm gonna force it to treat it as a city. It's actually gonna check to make sure it's a city. But this is one of the things we were talking about, and we're gonna be getting to this during the next week of lectures, uh, not next week, but two weeks from, from um, today probably. But uh, this agent continuous 2D, changing it over to a city. Cities are agents, people are agents. When it calls get connected agent, it doesn't know whether it's a person or a city. We have to tell it, hey, this is a city because it's connected to a city, I know it's a city. So this thing here is called a cast. This thing here is called type coercion, is another name for it. And basically it's saying, look, I know what I'm doing. This, you may think this is just an agent, but treat it as a city. And it will double check for us. 
to make sure actually it can't check it right now but without running it but when it's running it will check it so I just compiled it it it, it, uh, it compiles fine and I will go run this now and now we're gonna have people going between cities um, so so uh, you could see people moving around can you see them they're 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 diffusing diffusing around um, and in fact if we were to um, hmm. yeah they get connected into the scale free network okay, so they, they generate. yeah and in fact you can you could kind of see it here um, when uh, just keep your eye on yeah, I'd say I speed see. it up and you could see when when they get added in the network structure changes yeah, the, yeah, you see, look at that. Oh, uh, yeah, it's regenerating it from scratch. That's right. So some of these got really low in um, in population, and uh, and it um, yeah, like like here actually, it's interesting. It's uh, very few, and then it sort of imposes that network and so on. Um, so. regenerate from scratch you could do it you would have to write the code to sort of um because i think i mean it's, so there's a an algorithm for generating the the uh, scale free network and um normally that's that's done by sort of adding the nodes uh, you know inc incrementally and they have a certain chance of being connected so you could probably by the same token add this person in with a certain probability of being connected uh that's that varies proportional to the number of connections that the other person has. And, and that, would be, that wouldn't be that hard to do at all. It would be pretty, very straightforward to do. Okay, um, I'd like to suggest something just, just for the heck of it, and it's actually related to a question, um, uh, something David had, had suggested related to the um, thing we saw last time. Let's suppose we want to give these cities names, and we want to label them visually. How do we do that? How do we do that? What would we need? So there's two different things. Give them a name on the one hand and have it show up visually. Okay, so, so for the name, we give it a parameter. So let's go drag a parameter over there and we'll call it name, right? And yeah. Okay, this is a good question because it's not changing much. And second of all, um, it may be imposed from above by the thing that creates this. Like maybe it will read it from a database and, and, and draw values from a list of names or something like that. So parameters are used to communicate information to the agent from whatever created context, uh, context in which it was created. That's one good reason. A second reason is that it doesn't change much. Okay. Um, okay. Um, String, we're going to make this a string. So I drag that over the parameter and it's a string. What does that mean, a string? Does that mean like it's too short to be saved? Okay. <laughs> that didn't ring, ring any bell. Sorry. I, older generation here, I guess. Um, so so whoa, it's a list of characters. Yeah, it's a sequence of characters. Um, which actually, these days, when I was young and the world was still cooling, it was. Um, it was a sequence of ASCII characters, which which were an impoverished subset that couldn't even express, you know, French French accents, much less multilingual characters from Arabic or Chinese or what have you. And these days, it's a it's a multilingual thing. It's Unicode strings. You can you can encode Cyrillic or or you know Far Eastern scripts, all sorts of different things. Okay, so this is a string. Okay, um, so that's that's a name, and and we could in fact. Um, impose um, impose various names on um, on these and we'll come back to that point but how do we have that name displayed how do we display that name if we want to display it up there well how do we have it display other things about it okay good yeah, yeah. You go to the presentation, right? Um, presentation here, 
and uh, and then we go to where's the text? It's you got to scroll down, right? There we go. See this text? Drag that over and and be wary of where you put it put it because you want to put it in a visually obvious place. So maybe we'll put it right up next to this thing there. Okay, and there's a thing called text, and we'll call it. So this this little thing is going to label it. We're going to call it, you know, um, text name. Okay, um, and you notice it has a default text in there. Um, do we want to say look? Let's put in this text here, Boston. Okay. Let's let's put Boston in there. We, we I gave it a name. I gave this thing a text name. Suppose I were to run this model. What would what would show up? Okay. Um, now I'm a fan of Boston, but um, uh, and there are a lot of Bostons around, but this is a bit too many of them, I think, right? Um, uh, so, so, um, so you know, be a lot of a lot of Red Sox teams there. <laughs> so, so let's go back up to there. How do how are we going to have this be related to our name? Ah, uh, okay. So where would where would we put that? Remember, we we've worked with visual elements before. What are the other visual elements here? A circle and a, and a line. In fact, we have right. Um, so where did we when we wanted those things to change? Like we wanted them to grow or to shrink or to be have more lines or fewer or or a color. Yeah, we went to the dynamic. So let's go to dynamic for this dynamic for text and then there's a text thing here and we could just make this be what this dot this dot name right okay okay so that's all well and good um now now then we're gonna have to get these names in here from somewhere and you know um in obvious places you read them in from a file or something like that um one thing we could do here would be to uh, try to draw them uniformly from some, um, or not uniformly, from some uh, value. So let's go up to main. This is going to take us um, maybe a little bit far, but let's go up to main. And um, what we're going to do here is, I'm just thinking of how to do this. Yes, right, okay. Um, so, folks, we're going to draw values for these from a uh, collection. Hmm? I'm going to have a collection of names. Um, let's go do this. So, um, we're going to put a variable in. This is main. We're now in main. Um, and uh, because we're in main, um, we can put a variable in that will be reflective of things across the entire model, right? Um, and this will be, I'm going to call this, um, uh, I'm going to call it the um, uh, city names, okay? Right? Okay? So I, I just dragged a variable into here, and I'm going to call it city names, and this is going to be an other, okay? Um, and uh, I am going to have this be, it's interesting, I've never, um, uh, I would like this to be an array of of in, of, of strings, um, and the problem is the syntax might um, might get in the way. I think this this might actually work depending on how how it does this. So let me let me just try this. Um, so I'm going to say Portland. I'm going to say Bangor. Um, I'm going to say uh, Kennebunk. Um, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, uh, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see if it if it's actually working now. Um, so so let's let's try to um, see this. Okay, array constants can only be used in initializers. Okay, yeah yeah yeah. Okay, fine. Um, so you're gonna prevent me from doing that. Okay. Um, uh, let's go see. W well, you don't, probably don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I'm going to do Control J there. I want to see what what this turns into in code. I see it's uh, turning it into a little uh, assignment here, and you can only use it when it's initially created. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is how it sort of secret. This is the secret underneath any logic. This is its dark underbelly. Um, and what we see is it's actually assigning this. So 
Um, we're going to have to uh, figure out a different way to do this. Um, you just, you know, just exactly. This is what I'm going to do. So, folks, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the city names, okay? And I'm instead going to put it in manually um, right in here. You go to main and you go to advanced and we're going to have additional class code and I'm going to have string um, uh, string uh, city names uh, and then there's going to be Java allows you to put this in multiple places but I'm gonna see if if uh, it'll be more more happy with this okay yes okay so there are certain things folks that uh, sometimes Java gets uh, you could do things in Java by like listing a set of names like this and it's very nice to be able to just list things out but, but any logics variables somehow don't allow for directly assigning from this. Um, give me a bunch of other main cities. So there's, um, sorry? No, 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 I'm looking for cities in Maine. Um, uh, so so, so uh, Moose Lake Migantic, um, and uh, let's see, what is it? Caribou Maine. Caribou? Yeah. Okay, um, so that's good, and then there's, um, um, let's see, um, Augusta. Augusta, good, sorry, yeah. Rockland, Rockland, Maine, okay, um, uh, okay, Y-O-R-K, Y -O -R -K. okay, that's very good, um, Freeport. Freeport. oh, Freeport, Freeport, that's, that, that's, that's right, um, and, um, in, oh, Southport, uh, a limestone, okay, limestone, um, and then Booth Bay Harbor, um, uh, and then I think um, Monhegan Island is technically part of Maine. Uh, Monhegan, oh, hey, hey, Island. Well, okay, we could go to town with this. Um, and these are these are as befits them cities in Maine. Um, a m a i n e. Um, sorry, <laughs> having a bit of bit of fun here. And uh, okay, and so um, okay, so th that's one step. So we've defined some cities in Maine, and we're going to try to build it. And it's fine. It's good with that. Okay, so those are some cities in Maine, but now we've got to link the two up, right? And so how are we gonna somehow link those on the one hand to, to the names of the cities that we created? Ah, uh, you actually don't. Um, it's a good idea and that would work, but there's a simpler way. Go, there's a simpler way. You could do that, it's true. Um, but go to cities. Cities is a collection, right? It's a collection of cities. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, remember when we first started talking about parameters, like income? Remember that? We started talking about income. We started to talk about uh, age as a parameter. Remember, when we have a parameter, what can we do to specify that value? Where can that value be, be specified? We have a parameter for main, where is it specified? We have a parameter for a person and the person's in a population, where can we specify the parameter value? Do you remember that? Where do we specify income way back when? Well, okay, so if we go to this population, there's actually, you can see there's actually a whole parameter sort of tab here, see that? Yeah? Okay, so you notice there's a little light bulb there for good reason. And it says use index, index of replicated cities. You see where I'm going with this? So it's going to tell us, what do you think that index is going to be? It's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And all we have to do, this is telling us, tell me the name for this person. I could draw randomly from it, but I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to have city names, and I want to have this be index. So that's, this is, folks, this was just that so-called array which we created here, this so-called array of city names, right? And, and this guy, this thing here is just looking up the, the, the zeroth or the first or the second element, depending on what index is. So the first person in the population will get the first city name. 
the second person in the population will get the SETI second. So this, this is, in other words, saying for the first person, the index will be zero. Second person index will be one. Third person index will be two. And it's looking it up in this city names. And it's going to use that to set their name. Okay, so let's run this thing. Do we have enough city names for every number of cities? Well, how many cities do we have? I, think, I thought we had 10. I thought we had 10, so I thought we were in pretty good shape. Um, sorry? Oh, okay. So I have to, I have to put a colon? No, that, I don't, I don't, no, it works okay with, with mine. Um, because that's an expression. This isn't a, a statement. Um, uh, it, this is an expression. It evaluates to a value to use for the name. Okay. So, um, uh, okay. So, so how many people are in this, these, how many cities are in the city? It's, uh, it's 10, right? So we should be fine. It might not even get, get up to Muslik Maguntik. Um, okay, so I'm going to run this thing, and let's see what happens. Hey. Okay, here we go. There we go. Pretty good, eh? Pretty good. Okay. Um, now, we could even even have a little bit more fun. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Go have fun. We could have like the size of the city name be dependent on the population of the of of the of the thing or whatever. But um, obviously, we could go to town with this. But this this would be a way of connecting names with the visual representation where that name is drawn from. Here, it's drawn from an array. In general, it might be drawn from a database, right? Well, you might be able to like tick off, okay, this one has been assigned already, or this one has been assigned, or yeah, something. Would be the well, okay, so so I would have a, um, I would have probably two arrays. One would be an array of booleans as to whether it's been assigned or not, another an array of, of the actual things. And once one has been assigned, you just rule it out, you do a uniform. Um, uh, anyway, so that's, that's, um, um, that is assignment of some structured data, which you could draw from a database, or you could draw from a file, to these names. And that's how you'd associate it visually with that. All right. um, okay, so that, uh, that's all well and good. Um, so I think what I'll do now, so that was uh, building a meta population model. Um, I actually had more on this, um, which was, um, to, to add infection spread, but I'll, I'll leave that. Suffice it to say, if you have infection spread here, then you could have some infections which spread rapidly within a given unit, like within a city. And then, then when a person moves to another city, it will spread. It's like a spark going from one fire and going just a little bit nearby, going just over the hill to another place and starting a fire there. And so you can kind of have these people moving around. And... Um, Obviously, we could um, have uh, much larger populations. So uh, just so that uh, people here feel well served, um, we could go to a uh, city, and we could have city population be, um, be between, instead of 10 and, and uh, 200, it could be between 1,000 and, and, uh, and say, 2,000. And let's, let's just go see what, um, what works. Incidentally, I will be talking about what any logic's limits are for, for things. Um, this is going to actually take a, a while to, to uh, do. You, you see, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, um, so you have these populations, and there's actually, incidentally, if you scroll down, this is actually a pretty nif nifty feature. Pull down this, what would you expect to see? Cities, right? Within each city, you can get down to the individuals within that city. Um, so I could go, okay, this is going between cities, and then I could go in the city population, um, for example, some of the individuals in those cities, right? Um, so, so here it allows you to kind of explore at different levels, and then you can kind of pop up with, with these things uh, to the, to the uh, topmost level. Oop, hey, hey. Um, I wanted to go back to uh, view the root object. Um, yeah, okay, uh, there we go. Good. Good. Okay. Um, so when you have these hierarchical models, you can 
explore them at multiple levels of the hierarchy through this. You could collect statistics. So, for example, you collect statistics on, you know, at the city level, um, excuse me, uh, at the city level, uh, what fraction of, of the uh, people are uh, infected. And what you'd find is, if you did multi-level modeling, for example, um, you would find that there might be city level factors having to do with city population and so on that shape the likelihood of, of infection being present. And then there'd be some prevalence for the whole population of infection, right? Um, so um, the whole population could have a very different prevalence. So this lends itself to sort of description at different levels. And this is what I mean by nesting. This is, when, when I say people are nested here, we have these city objects, right? And each of those city objects contains, in a very real sense, these people. I mean, if you go look at, at the city objects within our model, and we could go look at our model structure, we have a city population, and that city population contains references to a set of, a set of people, right? Um, sorry, uh, so this is here in, in city, and there's persons within the city. So we could go up and compute statistics for that city. We can visually depict this city in terms of the people within it or in terms of its networks. And it, it really does mirror very well what you see outside, you know, that we have people located within a city. Here, people, persons are located within this city, and then those persons can be themselves analyzed below that environment. So you can summarize up statistics, say, at a city level. We could impose statistics on the city population that would be computing things on a per city basis. And then we could uh, have statistics at the global level that would be computing things about the cities. Um, so, so in terms of structure, in terms of um, uh, visualization, it's a very convenient way to, um, to understand uh, a very nested situation in the outside world. Okay. So any questions on this before we move on to some cleanup from last time's discussion? Questions? No? OK. Um, OK, so I, I had um, a couple uh, things I wanted to, uh, to talk about from last time's discussion. Um, and let me see if I can, uh, yes, it's the final things in Java statements here. Yes? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, that's interesting. So you're saying um, uh, the model um, continues to run, yeah, sort of. Running, but they just, uh, the right. Um, Okay, so what I would do is, um, How many times can the event go off? well, that's, I can go off arbitrarily many times if you allow it, and that's exactly what I was thinking about doing, is sort of going and look at the event, and what I would do, just to debug that, is I would go in, okay, I would go to, uh, where is the event? It's defined at the person level, right? Because it's the person who wants to move. And I would do this, and it says move to random connected city, and either here directly, or in move to random, um, connected city, I could say, you know, um, uh, a person has moved at time, you know, time, right? Um, so this is going to print something out on the console, you'll recall, that's going to be the string, and this is going to be pasted together, concatenated with another string that represents the current time, right? And and if we did that, um, I'm going to move it to be a smaller population. Um, Pardon my Canadian roots, but um, uh, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going back home. Um, so uh, uh, if we go to uh, city, the city population, instead of being between 1,000 and 10,000, I'm going to move, move it back to its original, um, between, what was it, 10 and, and 200 or something. Um, and uh, let me just run this now. And just see see if we can get because if, if it occurs here, David, I'll I'll, I'll go and um, look into it. If not, maybe there's some other thing which I could look at. Okay, so I'm running this, and you said it stopped around time. Uh, 
Okay, okay. So this is reporting up to there, but my time, where is the time limit for the simulation set? Do you remember that? It's an experiment, and there's model time, right? And it says stop time. So I'm gonna do 1,000, right? Because uh, yours dies at 500-ish or so. And I'm gonna sing now. Um, and, and let's try this, okay? I'm gonna speed this up. By the way, this will put it in virtual mode. Um, okay, here's someone moved at 738, 551, 424. Um, but it seems that they are becoming less likely, or they're moving less commonly now? Look. Yeah, so, so let's go figure out what's going on here. Look at this. I mean, early on, people are moving every, on average, there's somebody moving in less than, less than one time step on average. And then later on, they're moving infrequently. Now, it could, well, let's go, I don't see any thing for that. Let's go, ah, ah, okay. So let's go look at this event. Okay, this is a rate. It's 0.01, so it should just keep on firing. I was thinking maybe it was set to fire once, and each person had one kick at the can for moving, and that's it. But no, it's it's firing. Uh, it is it is firing on an ongoing basis. You know, if it had been uh, a timeout or something, we could have had it occur once. But no, it's a rate. Okay. Um, we could also look. You know, by having it like. We could, if we wanted to know if, if a given person's moved more than once, we could say, you know, person this, and this is actually going to say their name, who they are, and then that would tell us if they're moving more than once. Although, actually, this is flaky. We'd have to, eh, we'd have to give them a unique ID because they're labeled by what city they're in. They can move between cities. Anyway, um, let's go try to figure this out, though. Um, okay, so. Um, what about people's progression? Let's go look at person. I mean, is there anything about person that, that is changing otherwise? Um, uh, anything about their behavior? No, no. Um, I'm wondering if, if the population size is going down. Anything changing at that level? Um, hmm. What, what, would be, what would be different? Um, Okay, so this is time a thousand. I don't see anything obviously, obviously wrong. Um, okay, so let's let's try this. Um, I'm just gonna run it again and see what the last uh, time is. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, so these. Hmm. But are we running it with the same random number seed? Um, a fixed seed, yes. Yeah, so we need to change it to random seed. Uh, but still, I'm wondering if when they get... Okay, let's try this. Um, suppose we... Well, okay. So I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of debugging. What you could do is you could suppress them actually moving to a different uh, city. You could just have the event go off. Okay, let, let's try just having the event go off, okay? Um, so I'm gonna say person would have moved at time, um, right? Let's just see if, if, if we get the same phenomenon, right? We're trying to figure out, does it have something to do mechanistically with, with sort of them moving around, okay? Um, okay, now it goes to the end. Okay, I think there is Mmm, the plot thickens. Um, okay, let's try this. Okay, so now we, we seem it has something to do with moving, right? Okay, um, so my next hypothesis. Oh, I changed, basically I eliminated the call to move to random connected city. So basically I, they, they don't actually move, just the event goes off, okay? Um, this is uh, part of the reason I'm doing this is because it's it's good to see sort of how you might go about debugging things. Okay, um, okay. So uh, here we we see the event is still going off at very regular intervals. If they don't move, okay. 
So I have two lines of thought of what we could explore. We could say, well, suppose they always move to their same city. Would it still exhibit this dysfunction? Does it have something to do with moving to a different city? Another question would be, um, suppose we, did, instead of used under bar add, suppose we used, <laughs> suppose we used the legit way, okay? So let's, let's first do that. My greatest suspicion is something to do with me using that undocumented feature. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have move to random connected city. That's, that's still gonna be there. Um, but uh, let's go and change this. Uh, so move, oh sorry, it's move between specified cities. It's that one. And I have this under bar add. What I'm, instead I'm going to do is city dot city two dot city population under bar add oops um city two dot city population sorry, dot add under bar city population okay that's that's what i want to do this is going to add in an anonymous person to the new pop to the new population so and it's just going to add some some faceless <laughs> automaton. <laughs> okay. a, baby a, a baby was born. Yeah, um, that, that's right. Um, okay, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's more than just a baby. It's kind of a, you know, a baby which has no, uh, yeah, well, okay, yeah, it's a new creature. That's true, <laughs> that's, that's true. Okay, so I'm gonna run this, okay? And time moves on, empires rise and fall. And, and it's still working. The fox has shown its tail. Um, so, uh, <laughs> good, good, good. Which was, a, one of you said, spotted the underbar ad. I can't remember which. Uh, okay, okay, good call. Um, so it looks to me like underbar ad um, exhibits some un undesirable side effects. Um, so um, that remains unresolved in this version of any logic to see how to add someone a particular person into this other population. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that. That's my homework. That's my homework next week. Um, sorry? No, I would, I, I would actually first search the any logic. Um, first of all, there's been substantive changes to this product since we did that earlier model. So I'd go and see for this version sort of what's the uh, preferred way of doing it. I mean, the real risk of using an undocumented feature is they may, they don't feel any obligation to keep it the same, right? I mean, that, that's the whole point in many ways of making it undocumented, so they have the latitude, the freedom to modify it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they may have modified it between the versions. They may have provided a different way of sort of adding someone to go to a new population. And I would go, I would go look in the uh, documentation for uh, the uh, class to find out um, is there a way to add someone to one of these collections, um, like a particular person or a particular agent to an existing collection. Um, I would uh, further go look online to see if people comment on it. I would further look a little bit at their code um, to because that's how we discovered actually that 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 use of underbar add. Um, to see how they do it, because they might use a method that's now documented, it's just that it didn't exist in that earlier version. I would also, and by the way, if I wanted to get access to code in here, I think I've, I, I showed you the, the secret to do it, but um, all you do is, if you want to see the actual code, first of all, you can right click on main, and you can do open with, and you can see a Java editor. Now, you can't change that, but you can go see what's there. Now, I haven't shown it to you because it's not for faint of heart, but um, there's our, there's our, see that? There's our city names. You cannot, cannot, cannot change it. Because if, if you went and changed it, it wouldn't know how to update the, the models, a high level structure. So this is produced, but it's, and it's, you can look at it for debugging and so on, but you can't actually change it. Hmm. Um, at least not officially. Um, <laughs> There, there, there are ways if you if you have to, but um, talk with me offline about that. Um, so uh, uh, we don't really make use of that for for our modeling. We haven't had to change this ever, but there are some things like if we wanted, like we we have some tools that will allow you to do things like 
trace all um, uh, tra trace all places where data sets are written and, and record them to a database, something along those lines. Um, and or spy essentially what's going on under the covers and and take advantage of it. It might be the sort of thing, although we don't have this particular one. You know, every time a transition fire is reported or something like that, things that are useful for debugging. And um, there are ways of kind of going and inserting code in there so that it will record all these things. So you don't have to do it manually. Is there a way that you just uh, create a temporary variable where you can start the old parameter from the user and then add the new user and then just the same Oh, you're talking about uh, for like person? Yes. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Around, around. Sorry, as a workaround. Yeah, well, I was in fact going to make that point, and I thank you for doing. That. I mean, that's the that's the fallback workaround. Like, let's suppose I can't find a legitimate way to do this in the new version of AnyLogic. Let's suppose I couldn't find. I, first of all, I I have trouble believing that because it's a clear need. You have a person coming from one population going to another. There should be a way to 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 put them in the new population. After all, they're just a person reference. You should be able to put them in there. So. I believe there is a way to do it, and I would search for a while for that. The fallback is to, to basically manually copy. Okay, so you create a new person over here, you know, and there's this old person. You just copy all the attributes, all their history, all their state, all their parameter values, all their state chart, sort of current situation. That all goes to the new person, and the old person vanishes. So it's like you clone them. Mm -hmm. It's like they teleport, you know. Um, over over somewhere else, all their things are copied, and the original person disappears, or something like that. Um, um, so so you could do that. Worst case, that that much is clear. But be good to avoid this. So uh, I think thank you too for um, for pointing out um, you know the symptoms and the underlying cause, um, and we'll have to figure out the sort of the, the fix for it. But as it turns out in this case, person is faceless here. Um, given that they're moving, really all they have right now is a location and a visual representation. Visual representation is the same for all people. All that's different is their location, their position, the network. And when they move, that changes anyway. So is we it, can... Is it also not yeah. just the same any logic support and details? Yeah. Yeah, they're actually pretty darn good about, about these things, and I would probably do that. And we, we seem to get pretty good, good. response back, you know. Um, there's also a pretty active user community for any logic that I found helpful. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll be able to to resolve this issue. I'm confident about that. Um, this might be a silly question, but yep. is there any order of operations issue that you you add them and then remove them as opposed to removing them and then adding them? Um, that's a good question. Um. I, okay, I'll tell you why I did it, that order. What was kind of, I think, of the back of my mind. Like, the neurons that flashed just before <laughs> I put that code into that order. Because, you know, when I'm creating these things, I'm always asking myself, okay, what are the pieces that have to be done here? What order they have to be done? And reasoning about the dependencies. And I'll tell you why I did it, that order, okay? And I, I, it may be faulty reasoning. I figured, okay, look, I know it's legitimate to have a population that doesn't have an agent in it, right? Agent Joe could I could have a reference to him. He might not be in a population. I know that's 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 okay. It's also legitimate to have Agent Joe in one population alone. I know that. What I don't know is if Agent Joe is in two populations simultaneously, what is is that going to cause any sort of issue? So rather than adding them into the new population first, and then they're both in the new population, old population, and then deleting from the old population, I I did it the reverse order. I deleted them. There are no population. I know that's generally okay. Then I added them in. But maybe deleting them from that population, maybe it cleans up some information about them. You know, in other words, maybe it it goes and housekeeps Joe and says, okay, we don't need Joe to be able to have events anymore. Joe is removed from the event queue. Joe is no longer legit. Joe is 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 no longer gonna be considered worth, you know, handling their events. I'm wondering if that's what's happening. And so it may be that when people get moved, um, and we could easily trace this, uh, look at this with a trace message, it may be that once people get moved, there's no more events handled from them. Mm -hmm.
No, the problem is that, so it, it's a good, good question. The problem is if you create a temp variable, of per, so if I have, and, and this is a, a, a good lesson, if you have person, person, so if I have P and P points to some person, right? And this is certain characters, oh, right? Um, right, if I had a new person called, say, TFP, and I assign it equal to P, um, well, all that's going to do is have P, TMP now point to that same person. Um, so it's actually not going to clone them. Now, there is a Java clone operation. Earlier versions of any logic, I think, didn't support that for people. Um, and now be, it may be that you can clone, it may be that people are now, okay, I mean, in the context of any logic, it may be that people are clonable. Let's, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's go look. Like, um, for a person, let me, let me just, Check what the heck. Um, for a person, you know this dot clone. Can I? Oh, I can clone. Okay, let's, let's folks. Let's um, in the close. Okay, I've I've got to get out of here. Um, um. Okay. Uh, but if I wanted to do move to random connected city. Um. Okay. Did I? Um. Uh. Okay. I did this. But let, let's let's try. Uh, okay, wait. But okay, we can clone. But um, clone just creates a copy of us. It just creates a new a new sort of thing with all the properties of this one. I still don't have the way to add it in to the new part. You use you use add. Okay. Yes, I see what you're saying. That it's really that they've been removed from the old population. So, okay, so that's a more refined hypothesis, and I agree that's, uh, that would be an alternative hypothesis. Let us, let us try this then, person P clone. So person clone, um, so, um, you know, um, my clone, right? Um, my clone equals this dot clone, okay? Let's, let's try that, right? And then we'll do, um, add we're gonna add my clone in right okay and then we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of this and uh, oh wait no we got a clone before we remove right um, so maybe the remove is somehow corrupting this person in a in a sort of weird way um, okay uh oh uh oh okay oh it cannot convert from an object because clone converts objects all it knows is it applies to objects. When you clone something, all it knows is it gives back an object. Now, I happen to know, sorry, that this object is a person. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna force it to be a person. Okay, and then, and then I've gotta run here and, uh, oh, uh, unhandled, oh, look at that. Clone not supported exception. So, alas, it doesn't support it properly. It, it's not clonable. It should have told us that up front. Know, but uh, by not allowing us to do this, but alas, it doesn't. So we'll get an answer to this. Um, I appreciate. Uh